Professor Dave and Chegg here. We've been discussing galvanic cells from a more practical standpoint, but it will also be useful to talk about the thermodynamics behind them so that we can get a more fundamental understanding of this phenomenon. So let's do that now. We know that a galvanic cell involves a spontaneous redox reaction generating an electric current that can be used for some practical purpose. This is because the flow of electrons, which is what an electric current is, can do work. Just like water spontaneously flowing downstream in a river can do work and push a water wheel, which can then drive some mechanical function, so too can a spontaneous flow of electrons do work. This electromotive force is defined in terms of a potential difference between two points in a circuit, measured in volts, kind of like a gravitational potential difference from a higher elevation where a river starts and some point of lower elevation where the river flows to. Recall that a volt represents a joule of work per coulomb of charge transferred, so V equals J over C. In the context of an electrochemical cell, we consider work to be negative when flowing out of the system, such as when a galvanic cell produces a current. Cell potential is related to work and charge by this equation, so we can see that a negative value for work results in a positive cell potential, which is also characteristic of a galvanic cell. As we know from learning about the second law of thermodynamics, some of the work produced by a galvanic cell will always be lost to the environment rather than going toward the cell potential. The wire that allows for current flow will produce heat, such that the maximum work possible is not physically attained. Again, this is because the entropy of the universe must increase for any spontaneous process, and this dispersal of energy in the form of heat is what produces this increase in the entropy of the universe. Despite the fact that we can never harvest the maximum work possible from a galvanic cell, we can still make approximations with the following equation, where work equals the opposite of charge transferred, which is the moles of electrons transferred, times Faraday's constant, times the actual potential difference. This can also be expressed in terms of the change in free energy, and if we want to know about the standard free energy change, we simply change the cell potential to the standard cell potential with the appropriate superscript. This means that the maximum cell potential is directly related to the free energy difference between reactants and products in the cell. For example, given this galvanic cell with copper and iron and their associated reduction potentials, what is the standard change in free energy for this cell? Well, first we calculate the cell potential, which will be 0.78 volts. That goes in the equation along with Faraday's constant, and also 2 for moles of electrons, because 2 electrons are being transferred for every copper ion. Doing the math, we get negative 1.5 times 10 to the 5 joules. And now we have a better understanding of how cell potential relates to electrical work and free energy. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.